So welcome back to another video. Do me a favor, please. We just hit 700 subscribers. Uh, drop a like, subscribe, leave a comment. We do a bunch of great basketball content on this channel. And as you see by the title, we I got another article for y'all. Now, if you've been on the channel for a while, you know, I love a good article. And free agency has been kind of slow. Now, it's been some trades and signings here and there, but I still think like, we're waiting for the Kevin Durant and Kyrie news. So this article, we will come and react to it. It's just, you know, some trades that could happen to spice up free agency. So yeah, I hope y'all enjoy this. With that being said, let's hop straight into All it. All right, and here we have it. As you see, trade ideas to save NBA free agency's biggest losers by Dan Vavell. And I'm guessing we're going to have something to deal with Luka Doncic and Mark Cuban. Because Mark Cuban looking real sad over here. I don't know what's going on in, in this picture, but he's looking real sad. So I'm guessing we got some uh, stuff to talk about. Because, like, like, do you consider uh, losing Jalen Brunson? Like, I'm like, it, it's significant, yes. But, like, does it really make them losers? I guess we'll have to come and see. In my opinion, I, I don't really know yet because I'm not really, really keeping up with the Mavs like that. Besides, everybody knows they lost Jalen Brunson, but I'm not really keeping up with the Mavs like that. So uh, I think we could pretty much – Ask more now. We need to ask. Oh, we can skip pretty much all of this. Uh, stuff we pretty much know the Jonte Murray and stuff like that. Rudy Gobert. Let's see. First one is Brooklyn. He gets what he can for Kyrie Irving. Yeah, like I said, we were still waiting on more Kevin Durant and Kyrie news. Uh, whenever that's going to happen, I mean, I don't know, but it's, it's looking like a lot of teams aren't really interested in Kyrie Irving. And like, if I'm being real and honest, as a real person, I don't blame him. Uh, like, getting Kyrie. Uh, like, like, yes, Kyrie's one of the best players in the league, but getting Kyrie comes with more than just him playing basketball, as we've seen for the past two years and most recently last year with the whole, you know, if you know. But let's see what they got to say. The Brooklyn Nets received Russell Westbrook, Chicago's 2023 second round, 2027 first round pit unprotected, and a 2027 second round pit. The Lakers received Joe Harris, Kyrie Irving. So pretty much the trade we've been seeing. But like, I was always seeing it was just, uh, Russell Westbrook and Kyrie Irving. And you know, like picks, you know, Russell Westbrook some picks, and then uh, for Kyrie Irving. But it's my first time seeing Joe Harris, so let's just give it a quick little look over. I'm not going to read everything because we'll be here all day. Uh, please, all right, yeah. So, pretty much, uh, stuff we've been knowing, um, getting rid of Russell Westbrook clears up, uh, well, you know, really, well, like clears up his contract, considering that Russell is getting an older age and his production hasn't been the same as it was when he uh signed his contract, and then. Uh, trading him back to Kevin Durant. I mean, does this entice Kevin Durant to stay in Brooklyn with Russell Westbrook? In my opinion, I highly doubt it. Uh, then Kyrie and LeBron. Like, isn't that kind of crazy how, like, Kyrie and KD, Russell Westbrook and LeBron, like, they just swapping their point, the, like, their old former teammates back, which is kind of crazy to think about. Also, that was crazy. But, yeah, pretty much uh same thing we've been knowing, Russell Westbrook for uh, Kyrie Irving. That's really nothing – too impactful that we didn't already know. Then we got Dallas against reinforcement post Jalen Brunson. Yes. So like oh like losing Jalen Brunson, like a lot of people thought that that was a big loss. Like, don't get me wrong. It's like it is very impactful considering how good Jalen Brunson is. But if you could like because like but like don't get me wrong. Uh, the Mavericks, uh, like they signed uh, signed Javel McGee. Wow, I'm sorry, I was drawing a bunch. They signed Javel McGee for that center play. And I, Tim Hardaway Jr. coming back off of his injury. Now, I'm not saying Tim Hardaway Jr. is going to be on the same playmaking level as in the Brunson or stuff like that, but that's but uh, that's not true. But Tim Hardaway Jr. is still a solid player for his contract that they did sign him to. But he's coming back, so that's what I'm looking forward to. But let's see what they got to say. Dallas Mavericks get Malik Beasley. Cannot be okay until... Oh, Malik Beasley did get, uh, he did get traded. Did he just get traded? I think yeah, yeah, he did. Mike Conley. And Utah gets Josh Green, Tim Harwood Jr., the White Powell, and a 2025 first round pick. Now, now from just seeing this alone, I'm I'm saying yes. I'm saying yes slightly because Mike Conley comes in and gives you that another vet on the team, but he also takes up some of that Jalen Brunson playmaker responsibility. Maybe not as uh, like defensively gifted as uh, Jalen Brunson, but he's still coming to give that playmaking role that Jalen Brunson uh, left. And then Malik Beasley, another score, another streaky score, come in, spot up a shooter for Luka. I agree. And if you're just giving up Josh Green, which is like, uh, like Josh Green is cool, but he's only in like his third year. He still has improved. He hasn't really like 
blossomed in anything so far. He still has a lot to, uh, to improve on. Tim Hardaway Jr. is coming off an injury. We haven't seen him play in almost a year. So, so like you don't know what you're getting. Uh, uh, like you know what you're getting in Tim Hardaway Jr. concerning his injury. And the White Powell played regular season minutes, but in the playoffs, it was pretty much um, the White Power comes in. Jump, uh, jump ball, and then after that, he's on the bench for the rest of the game. And they did sign Javel McGee, so that takes up that center and fill up that hole that they had at the center position because they had the white power and Maxi Cleaver, but they weren't, you know, protecting the paint like Javel McGee will. So there's that. But Jalen Brunson departure represents a grand two failure in the Mavericks, bagging a four year deal. Uh, yeah, so it was like, like I'm not sure if it was came out or it was reported, but like. Then like they offered him like the same contract or like there was like the Mavs didn't offer him a contract. It was something like that. Uh the difference I'm saying the Mavericks should sit tight. They shouldn't they have Luka Doncic. You go for it. Utah offers a nice landing spot for prospective buyers. Donovan Mitchell may not be on the table yet, but uh, we just got reports that Donovan Mitchell is uh like uh, 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 it's like they're open for uh trade talks to Donovan Mitchell when they said they weren't going to be, but I you know things happen. Accepting Josh Green parlays physical tools. Yeah, Josh Green, no wrong. Josh Green, you know, has a lot of potential though. Uh, Dallas might be banking on reinsurance from Tim Harvey Jr. for his left foot injury. Like I said, you don't know what you're getting back uh, in Tim Harvey Jr., but you know Malik Beasley is going to give you points. He's going to, uh, yeah, uh, like I said, if, if it's me, I'm taking this trade. Uh, I don't really see much to lose besides. Yes, Tim Harvey Jr. is good, but like I said, we haven't seen him play in almost a year with his foot injury. Um, Malik Beasley it can come in and give you um, a production immediately. Mike Conley is getting older in age, but like in order to fill up that uh, hole at the point guard position, I would say, yeah. Uh, the Heat fan, I was sad to see P.J. Tucker go, but considering that P.J. Tucker is like 37 and he's still one of the best perimeter defenders, what all-around defenders in the league, and for uh, the Phillies to offer him, what was it, three years like 33 million, I was okay with that because I wasn't sure if my name was going to give him that contract or not, considering that he is 37. But his value, but like the fact that he's 37 and he still brings the value that he does is really impactful. So I understand why he left. It was more for the money, if anything. So I, I understand because not many teams were going to pay him 33 million. You know what I mean? Miami Heat receives Eric Gordon and Kenyon Martin. Yeah, so one of the surprises to me was Kenyon Martin came out. Kenyon Martin Jr. came out and said he wanted to, uh, what, that he wanted to be traded, which was surprising to me because like, you don't really get young players in like their second or like third year, I think it is, second, his second year, I don't know, uh, saying that they want to get traded. Like, that doesn't usually happen. And Eric Gordon has free Eric Gordon off the Rockets. That is, uh, uh, he can come in and give any team production, any uh, contending team production at any moment. So let's see. Eric Gordon, Kenny Martin Jr., Houston Rockets. We'll see Gabe Vincent, Haywood Highsmith, Duncan Robinson, 2027 first round pick, pending obligation to Oklahoma City, top 10 protection. Okay. Uh, so Gabe Vincent, um, don't get me wrong. I love Gabe Vincent. Uh, I, I like his, uh, uh, his role on the Heat, but I'm not sure how his role would be on uh, the Rockets. Uh, Haywood Highsmith is okay. He doesn't really play too much. I guess the, uh, another part would be Duncan Robinson. But if Duncan Robinson gets traded, I feel if at the timeline, like, he, like Duncan Robinson is surprisingly older than I thought he was. He's like 28, almost 29, I, I believe. He's older than I thought he was. So it doesn't really fit the timeline. But I, I guess if Miami wants to clear Duncan Robinson's contract, considering that he didn't really play too much in the playoffs, considering his lack of defense. But getting Eric Gordon back fills in that uh, shot creation role that Miami so lacked for in the half court set. Miami literally had literally no half court offense. I guess Eric Gordon can come in and change that as he is a player that's able to make his own shot. That's not Jimmy Butler. But PJ Tucker fled Miami to fill up second position. Jimmy Butler is going through it. Underestimate that he have nobody to replace Tucker. That is true. Uh, getting Eric Gordon and Kenyon Martin that doesn't help the whole PJ Tucker situation, considering that PJ was probably arguably one of the best defenders in the league. Uh, suffering a non-superstar trade market uh, out of question, and then uh, like the Miami still trying to get Donovan Mitchell. There's still some assuming about that. That's assuming that he can't get KD. Don't anticipate Mitchell trade requesting going. Going after someone like Martin as a pseudo Tucker replacement is a smart. He's a career. He's a career 36. Oh, I didn't know Kenny Martin was shooting that good. 36% shooting from deep. Okay, so he can switch from two, threes, and fours. I do know that. And he's a high flyer. But he's not bringing the same value on defense that PJ Tucker would. So 
but I like Kenny Martin Jr. though. Uh, about Eric Gordon, let's, let's see. Let's see. Okay, let's see Duncan Robinson. Duncan Robinson has a four year, $74 million on his contract out of Miami's postseason. Mar Martin has already requested a trade. That's crazy, yeah, which is still crazy to me to use that young know, requesting a trade. And 33 year old Eric Gordon won't fetch a King's ransom. Now, having a loosely protected first round that won't uh, come in until after Kyle Lowry, potentially, and Jimmy Butler have aged out of the big deal. Yeah. Also, Gabe Vincent is a real player, reasonable manager for a second year in the possession, finally hitting threes at the NBA level. And while Robinson's contract is steep, overpaying for a dead eye sniper with our worldly magnetic pool isn't the worst thing in the world. If anything, he's opened up the floor for Houston's three most important creators moving forward. Jalen Green, Alfred Sangoon, Jabari Smith Jr. See, the thing about that is Duncan Robinson requires people to set him up. And the Rockets young team they don't really have a playmaker like that but for so what i'm saying is this is just to clear duncan robinson's contract and get shot creation and kind of replace that pj tucker role so um as a heat fan i it's okay but i think we might be able to do better considering that we literally haven't done anything this offseason besides lose, lose pj tucker so i see why we're on this list hopefully things turn around because i don't know how long we have left in free agency but hopefully things turn around for the Miami Heat because we literally have done nothing besides Louis P.J. Tucker, like I said. Then the final trade is Phoenix Suns finally make a splash. No, not that splash, a different splash. So, yeah, another situation is the whole DeAndre Ayton thing. What's going on with DeAndre Ayton? Um, I'm starting to think that he's probably going to be there to stay because like, they're fumbling this whole situation. Uh, but there have recently came out that um, they're nearing, like, 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 like there's heavy talks between the Suns and the Pacers uh, concerning DeAndre Ayton. So we'll have to wait and see what that is. But let's see. Phoenix Suns received Rashawn Holmes. Sacramento Kings received Jay Crowder. So so are they assuming that DeAndre Ayton is gone, or are they just saying we're, we're, we're going to get Rashawn Holmes and put him and DeAndre Ayton on the floor together? I'm not sure, but let's see. Whether the Suns are losers, far lies behind. Devin Booker signed a 40 year extension. Phoenix Suns kept the rent. Preferred trade destination are both huge wins. That is true. But uh, in terms of the whole Kevin Durant situation, the Brooklyn says they're not trading uh, Kevin Durant unless Devin Booker is involved in that trade. So that's out of the question. We know that by now. But the Suns have also been a relative standstill bringing back Bismack Biyombo, which is good. He's a good backup. Uh, Damian Lee, oh, eh, that was okay signing for them, but DeAndre Ayton's future is hanging in the balance, and they haven't made a uh, appreciable upgrade on the roster that imploded during Game 7. Yeah, so cause, as of right now, they literally have their own, uh, their old roster. They don't have JaVale McGee anymore. Uh, reacquiring homes may not be a move that the Suns consider until after the KD and Ayton situation are hashed out. They don't need to wait through getting homes. Uh, free then up the priority off the return to Aiden sign and trade will be a sign and trade okay symbolizes him to let him walk yeah that is true Holmes is not uh is not Aiden on defense okay so they are assuming that DeAndre Aiden is going he cannot play as high up and doesn't have the same quick directional footwork but he's a rock solid rim protector who moves better than most traditional bigs and works hard enough on the glass so yeah, so 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 uh, like, that was one thing. Uh, DeAndre is really good, and like I'm not saying uh, like you could find centers that can come in and do what he can do, but if you want to work with Devin Paul, um, I said Devin Paul. Wow, if you want to work with Chris Paul and Devin Booker, who are like Devin Booker has, has become a better playmaker. Chris Paul is arguably the best playmaker of all time in opinion. So uh, uh, Rashawn Holmes can come in and fill in that pick and roll. Uh, position that DeAndre Ayton is uh, like yes he's not playing defense like DeAndre Ayton but he is a good sturdy big that could come in and be half as the, as of what DeAndre Ayton did so I can see what they're going with here Crowder is a real loss for the Suns but he's on an expiring contract and they have Cameron Johnson next deal to consider moving forward yes uh, considering that uh, uh, okay, that, that Jake Crowder is getting older in age uh, and Cam Johnson and Mikael Bridges have emerged as two of the best perimeter defenders literally in the league, and they're still so young. Moving crowd on makes include Mikael Bridges and the KD trade even more prohibitive. But you know we're talking about Kevin Durant. You'll figure 
that out later. Sacramento, Sacramento shouldn't have any qualms with this framework. It still needs defensive wings. Crowder will hold up against assignments in which Harrison Barnes, King, and Murray are less suited, and he doesn't jeopardize the Kings, Aaron Fox, and Montez Bonus, metric cap. So, yeah. One thing I want to say is uh, Sacramento, be on the top of Sacramento this season. Because, like, they are slowly putting together a team that could really, like, turn into something, which I'm, like, I'm going to be looking out for, and I think y'all should be too. So look out for them. And, yeah, uh, that's about it. So in the article, y'all let me know if there's anything that y'all saw that y'all agree with, if y'all disagree with. If your team on this list, let me know how you feel about what, uh, 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 what trades your team should make. Uh, you saw I gave my opinion about my Miami Heat. Y'all let me know y'all opinion about what things that y'all team should do. And as always, if y'all enjoyed that, do me a favor. Well, we just hit 700 subscribers. We're trying to get some more subscribers. Trying to get to 1,800. So as always, y'all like, subscribe, comment. And I'm going to catch this video. We out of here. Peace.